In this video, we'll learn how to automatically crop images so that they're centered around the largest face detected in the image. We'll be doing this in R, but we're going to be using the auto crop package, which is a Python package. And just from looking at the documentation for this package, we can see an example of what the input will look like and what the output will look like. This package is perfect for things like batch image processing. For example, here they mentioned that this could be useful for ID cards. This could also be useful if you need a ton of images cropped for training some sort of model. Right now there's also a lot of AI image generators, which usually require cropping to the face. And there's probably some other neat use cases for this as well. My name is Melissa Van Bussel, and I make videos about data science and R programming. If you find my videos helpful, please make sure you subscribe to my channel so that I can keep making more. The first thing that we're going to need to do is install the auto crop package. There's many different ways to install Python packages, but one of those ways is to use the reticulate package, which is an R package. So I'm going to start by loading reticulate and in the reticulate package, there's a function called pi module available. And I'm going to use this to check whether or not the auto crop Python package is already installed on my machine. I have already installed this in the past, so this should return true. But if it doesn't return true for you, then you'll need to install it. One way that you can do that is by using the pi install function, which is also from the reticulate package. And then the argument that you'll pass is just the name of the package that you'd like to install. And then you can set pip equal to true. I'm not actually going to run that since I already have it installed for me. And once that's installed, we're going to need to import the Python package so that it's available to use with reticulate. To do that, we can use the import function from the reticulate package, and we can also assign that to a variable so that it's accessible. In order to use auto crop, we'll also need to import a couple of other Python packages. And these are the two packages that we'll need to import. You might also need to install those Python packages if you don't already have them installed on your computer. And then from here, we can crop the image by accessing the crop function from auto crop in the following way. And then the argument that it's going to expect is the file path to an image. And I'm just going to be using the image that's in the documentation for this package. So I've just named that Obama.jpg. You might also need to set your working directory or pass the entire file path in order for this to work. And then I'm just going to save this to a variable and I'm going to call that cropped image. It runs pretty much instantaneously, but then there's one more step that we need to do before this image is actually usable. And for some reason, when the results are returned, they're rotated a little bit weird. We're going to need to rotate the image using the rotate x y function and that's going to come from the image r package and then if we look at the documentation for the rotate x y function we can see that it's expecting an image a rotation angle the x and y coordinates that you want to rotate from this cropped image object that we have here isn't in an image format that R is going to recognize right off the bat. So we have to do a little bit of a transformation to that object in order to apply the rotate XY function to it. To do that, we're going to use the C image function. And if we take a look at the documentation for that function, we can see that it's expecting a four dimensional numeric array. And if we take a look at what's currently stored in cropped image, we can see that right now it's not the correct amount of dimension. So right now this is only a three dimensional numeric array. So we're going to take this image and convert it from a three dimensional array to a four dimensional array. And if we look at the description of what these dimensions represent, the four dimensions are going to be X, Y, Z, and C. So X and Y are the usual spatial dimensions. Z is a depth dimension, which is going to correspond to time in a movie. And C is a color dimension. Because we're just using an image and not a video, the depth dimension wasn't included in the cropped image object that was returned from auto crop. So we're going to add that dimension and we're going to do that by using the array function. And here we need to specify first the data that we'd like to create an array of, which is going to be cropped image. 
And then after we pass the data argument to the array function, next it's gonna be expecting the dimensions for the array. So we're gonna pass a vector for the dimensions and our dimensions are going to be 500, 500, one, and three. And I'm just getting that from here. Currently the length for the first dimension is 500. The length for the second dimension is 500. The color dimension has a length of three. And then we need to add in a fourth dimension in between that represents the so-called depth dimension or time dimension. And we're just gonna set that to one. And this part will convert that into an image that the rotate xy function from the image r package can understand. Once we've converted that into an understandable image, we can pass the rest of the arguments to the rotate xy function. And if we go back to that documentation, we can see that next we need to pass the rotation angle, and that's going to be 90 degrees. And then the x coordinate of the rotation center, which we're going to set to 250, because that's midway through 500. Same thing with the y coordinate for the rotation center. And that's also because 250 is the midway point for the 500, which is the length of the y dimension. After I run that, the image is now rotated and it's actually ready to go. The only thing left is to preview the image and then save it. We can preview the image by applying the plot function to a rasterized version of the cropped image object. And this is what's now contained in the cropped image object. And to save the image, we can use the save.image function and we can apply that to the cropped image object and then provide the name of the file that we'd like to save the image to. I'll save the image. And now we can see that this was the original photo and this is the cropped image that was created using autocrop. I think this is a pretty cool package with some interesting use cases and it's fairly easy to use. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.